By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to a brand new episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are back at the Dutch X-Points Open for another round. And in this round, we are going to look at two decks that have so far been undefeated. It is Mono White, piloted by Dominique, taking on Mono Black, piloted by Matthijs. So this is a, a pretty high-level match. I think the winners, uh, the winner of this match, because there can be only one, of course, unless it's a draw, but then you've basically both lost, if you don't win, um, are still in it to win it at this tournament. So this promises to be an exciting match. Now remember, we are of course playing according to the X points rules, meaning there is a points list and here you can see the points list. So how does this work? When you build your deck, you can only spend 10 points on cards with points allocated to them. So for example, if you wanna go with, uh, let's say for him to Turex, that is going to cost you eight points, right? So then you only have two points left or something else. So it's going to be curious to see if the mono black player is playing a full play set uh, of him to Turex as well, because you cannot go for and him and mind twist in the current point system. So just to, to mention a few things that you have to keep um, in the back of your mind. Now, before we jump into the deck text, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to go to the game first, check out the deck text later. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So click on there, it'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a really nice link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. So if you want to support me as a content creator, please consider becoming a patron of the show. Check out patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. Okay, and now we are going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the deck of Dominique Mono White. And here we see the deck of Dominique. So this is really your white weenie strategy, and I like it. I like it because I'm seeing four Crusades and four Jihad. So he's going to go full on that plan. And yeah, I think that's pretty cool. You know, usually I I feel, but I'm not a white weenie player at all. I've played it sometimes and I do love the deck because it's so iconic, but I often feel that you have to make a choice between or go for a full play set of Crusade. So that's of course the enchantment for two white. It gives all your white creatures plus one, plus one, or you have to go for kind of Jihad, which is an enchantment from Arabian Nights, three white to cast, that when it comes into play, it says choose a color as long as opponent has cards of this color in play, all white creatures gain plus two, plus one. Jihad must be discarded immediately if at any time opponent has no cards of this color in play. So for me, that makes it kind of difficult sometimes in old school where you've got so many kind of five color good stuffish decks that actually don't have that many cards in play at the time. So against certain opponents, the Jihad can, can really like malfunction. But I think in this matchup, of course, playing against Mondo Black, it's gonna be great. You're gonna choose black. Um, but yeah, like I said, usually I feel like you have to choose between Jihad and Crusade. And what you see in most decks is they just go with four Crusades or go with four Crusades and maybe one Jihad as a surprise, maybe add some Army of Allah sauce in there. But in this case, he went completely for it and I love that. So it could be very explosive. Now remember, this deck is doing quite well today. So I guess he's made the right decision or just had the right matchups. And this is gonna be a good matchup for him with that in mind, you know, your Jihad and your Crusade are gonna do some work here, if of course he draws into them. And then we also see the card that's usually linked with White Weenie, because it's so good in a White Weenie strategy, and that card is Lantex, an enchantment from Legends, that during your upkeep, if you have less lands than your opponent, you can look up three basic lands, you gotta show them, of course, then put them into your hand. So untap, upkeep, look up three lands, then have your draw step, and why is this so good? So first of all, you can just take three lands, which is nice, but you don't need that many lands in a white weenie deck, but you also don't wanna draw into lands with white weenie. When you have white weenie, you wanna keep drawing gas, you wanna keep uh, drawing cards that hurt your opponent, preferably creatures, of course. So when you take out the basic lands with the land tax, that's gonna help you a lot. That basically means that you've got a really big chance of drawing more power, which is, which is great. And of course, it works together really well with uh, your Armageddon's. And again, in this matchup today, a lot of these mono black decks, they also go a little bit on land destruction, going with their sinkholes. Those cards are just not as effective against these type of decks because you have the land tax in play. And I think when you're playing a full play set of land taxes, there's a pretty big chance that you're actually going to see them uh, hitting the board in today's match. Uh, another card that I really like to, uh, to mention here is the Amru Kithkin. So the Amru Kithkin is a 1-1 creature and it works together really well with the Jihad and the Crusade. 
because it says creatures with power greater than two may not be assigned to block the Kithkin. Blocker's power may be increased after blocking has been assigned. So I always love like Amru Kithkin and put a blessing on it. Now we don't see a blessing in this deck. And I mean, it makes sense. Blessing is just, it's a cool card, but it's usually not good enough. Uh, but it works together really well with the Jihad and the Crusade. Right? Just imagine having a Crusade and Jihad in play. Then the Kithkin is going to get plus three, plus two. It's turned into a four, three that cannot be blocked by creatures with power greater than two. You know, so you can only block it on a two, two mind step throw. So it's going to be really, really, really tough to kill this Kithkin once you've got enough uh, Crusades and Jihads on the battlefield. So yeah, just a lot of nice little things happening in this white weenie build. I always love seeing you know cards that you don't see often in these brews and talking about that we also have king Suleiman here playing main i mean this is really a card you would expect in the sideboard but he's playing it main i think that's really badass as well so dominique i'm kind of liking your white weenie deck um, now let's take a look at the deck of your opponent matthijs which is i believe mono black and here we see the deck of matthijs well actually part of the deck of matthijs i don't have a deck photo unfortunately but it is mono black so i can kind of talk you through it um, I think that one of the things that you see often happening in Mono Black, especially when you allow him to Turek, is the discard decks. But remember, because of the point system, you cannot go from Mind Twist and him together. So if you want to have the discard, you see players going here for Mind Step Thrall and Hypnotic Spectre. Of course, two really good cards that can force an opponent to discard and then in combination with him to Turek. We don't see a Direk in this deck, so he doesn't want to win that way. What we do see is some more controlling options that he's gone for as well. He's playing Desert. He's playing Maze of If. I think Desert is really smart because that's going to help him against the Order of Light Burst, which is probably a card that you run into a lot. And then there are just more like one toughness creatures that you can deal with with your Desert. So I think it's, it's quite a smart inclusion. We see Maze of If that's going to kind of help you control against those uh, protection from black creatures as well. And then he also plays a Sinkhole. And I like the combination of Sinkhole and him, right? And also Hypnotic Spectre, by the way. So you're going to do some land den denial, making sure that your opponent cannot empty his hand and then or her hand and then you've got your him to force discard you've got you have not expector maybe you're going to force him to you know discard that key removal that he needs against the hippie it is going to be tough though playing that strategy against this white weenie deck with of course the land taxes and the fact that white weenie just doesn't need uh, a lot of mana you know um, a card that could be really valuable in this matchup is the dark ritual and i'm mentioning that because um, you know, an Armageddon is usually could be end game, you know, if your white weenie opponent times it right. But then with the Dark Ritual, just with one swamp, you can kind of get back into it, play that crucial blocker or make that crucial play to get back into it again. So Dark Ritual could be good. What I also like about this deck is that it's not all like, you know, discard and small creatures. No, he's also gone for some bigger creatures, like, for example, a Sengir Vampire, and he's also playing with Nevenerals Disc. So it's also like there are also a lot of control elements uh, in the deck of Matthijs, which, which I always like, you know, it's a little bit different than, uh, than what you usually see in a lot of these, uh, these mono black decks. Although, of course, a lot of mono black decks do uh, tend to play with at least one or two discs main because there's so many problems you cannot solve with mono black. Like black is good in a lot of things, but for example, if you want to deal with an enchantment or an artifact, it's really tough to do it with black. So that's where you really need your Nevenerals discs in your deck. But you can also say, you know, sometimes I'm going to run into that crucial artifact or enchantment that's that, but in general, I'm going to be so quick with my black deck, that doesn't matter. You know, that's another line of play you can take. But in this case, Matthijs went for a little bit more controlling route. I would say this deck is really kind of in that mid-range, you know, playing with land destruction, discard, and then, of course, your bigger creatures like your Sengir later in the game and your control elements like your disc and your Maze of If. Anyway, uh, this is what I can tell you for now about the deck of Matthijs. Unfortunately, I don't have a deck photo, but I think this gives you a pretty clear idea of what he wants to do. We're basically up for a classic matchup, right, between Mono White and Mono Black, which is always fun. I mean, I like it. it, it this is also truly old school magic, right? Mono White, Mono Black. It's as old as the game itself, you know, this standoff. So yeah, what are we waiting for? Let's go to the match here at the Dutch Open. Let's Game number one, here we go. Look at that Dominique starting here, putting a planes on a battlefield. He's on mono white, and his opponent is Matthijs. He's on mono black. So maybe this is going to be one of those matches that's going to be win to whoever draws the knights first with those protection abilities on them. Look at that order of light burst. So this is the pump knight from Fallen Empires with protection from black. So already a pretty big problem here for Matthijs. Looks like he's drawn into a Singer Vampire. 
Can he maybe play a swamp, then uh, play an order of the ebon hand? There's a desert. This is a great answer. Desert, a land from Arabian Nights. You can tap it for a mana, but you can also tap it to deal one damage to a creature after it's dealt damage. But that's, of course, perfect because the order of Lightbird is a 2-1. So, yeah, Desert is a very um, getting more popular as an answer to these uh, one toughness creatures. Also great against Savannah Lions. There we see a Thunder Spirit here being cast by Dominique. So, 2-2, first striker with flying. But yeah, this desert is, is quite important. We see, is it an order of the Evan Hand there in hand, perhaps, for Matthijs? It looks like it. I also wonder if he's playing with him to Turex, could cast a him here. Now that he has the double black. And I think against those like white weenie decks, if you have discard spells, you want to play them out as quickly as you can because they're gonna run out of cards very quickly as well. Here we see a Paralyze being played on the Thunder Spirit. So that means that if Dominique wants to untap it, he has to spend four mana in his upkeep. Doesn't even have the four at the moment. There's another Thunder Spirit. So yeah, Dominique really trying here to get some damage in, not very successful thus far. And uh, Matai is really good at just uh, keeping the damage at bay. Look at this, even more control elements. There we're gonna see the him to Turek, so. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad here, actually, for Dominique. I mean, he had a really good start, but every time Matthijs is finding these answers, and, ooh, Swords of Plowshares in the bin, and a Lantex. That Lantex would have been really nice, because uh, Matthijs currently has more lands than Dominique, so it's looking bad for Dominique here. Needs to get rid of the maze, but how? Maybe if he has a land drop and an Armageddon, that would be quite good. There we see the maze in action, and there's a Tundra Wolves, also a 1-1, though. I mean, if Dominique can get, for example, a Crusade, that would be great for him, because then that desert doesn't do as much anymore. I think there's a Dark Ritual in hand here for Matai, so could go Dark Ritual, and I think there was also a Sengir Vampire, so then he could play the Sengir, but then he has to tap out, so that means he no longer has the desert, so we'll take some damage, but I think it's worth it. Or does he have better options? Here's Dark Ritual, three black in the pool. Oh, there's an Evanerl's Disc. Oh, ho, ho, ho. So here we see Matthijs really playing that control game with his mono black deck. And there's the attack, three there in the, into the red zone. Knowing, of course, that you have the Disc, so he's going to send back the Thunder Spirit, probably kill the Pump Knight here. But remember, that happens after it's dealt damage, so... Dominique could consider pumping it up here and dealing an extra point, at least getting four damage in. You know, that's something. That's exactly what he does. He's going to deal that extra point of damage. Matthijs dropping to 16 and untapping here with the disc. There's also a desert now in hand. There's the desert. Ooh, and he's got a sinkhole, so he can consider sinkholing the planes. Stripping the other. Of course, he also has the Sengir in hand, so maybe he doesn't want to use the Strip Mine, want to keep it for mana instead. It looks like he is going to play the Sinkhole here. So there's the Sinkhole on the planes. Ooh, also has an Hypnotic Spectre in hand. Yeah, he can pass the turn, and for example, at end step, he can decide to use the disc, then deploy the Hypnotic Spectre in his own turn, and then start attacking the hand. That could be a line of play, and he can also use the Strip Mine to get rid of one of the planes. There's the attack again, so just very aggressive here, and that makes sense. You know, at least he gets some damage in, but it's, it's looking very bad for Dominique. So we see Matthijs now on 15, but he's not worried at all. There's another Swamp, so... Yeah, I wonder now, it's kind of the question, do you still want to use the disc? Because it's just not looking that great. He can just deploy the Sengir. But this is a little bit difficult, because what if you play the Sengir and then, you know, Dominique just responds with the Swords, for example? So I think he's really, like, in the tank. The line of play he can still do, of course, is crack the disc, play out the Hypnotic, and go for that line. Yeah, he is going to crack the disc here. Which is not that good anymore. But still, yeah, stripping it and then probably going to play the Hippie. I mean, this makes sense. Uh, there's the Swords, though. Like, if the Swords wouldn't have been there, it would have been great. But still, Dominique is really on the back foot here. 
And if Matthias can find another land next turn, he can deploy that Sengir. Ooh, there's a land tax. Yeah, this is this is quite a good comeback here from Dominique. Going with that land tax, we'll be able to pick up three lands next upkeep. Yeah, the tax, just an insane card. Really good, of course, in uh, in White Weenie, but just in general, a really good card. I also enjoy playing just a one of a land tax in, uh, in decks. Ooh, there's the Mind Step Throw, a card from uh, Fallen Empires. If it deals damage, you can choose to sack it instead, and then your opponent has to discard three cards. It's quite powerful. <laughs> And here we see Dominique using the uh, tax. So gonna pick up three basic planes, shuffling the library. <laughs> yeah, Mind Step Throw is quite popular in the format. Um, I also think it's because you cannot play N4 Hymns and a Mind Twist. Because the Mind Twist is very heavily pointed. It's four points, I believe, and a Hymn is two points. So you can only spend 10 points, but the Mind Step Throw has zero points. So it's kind of a really nice include together with Hypnotic Spectre to go for the discard. Here we see a White Knight, protection from black, but of course it can be stopped by that maze. But it, it is also going to stop the, the, the Mind Step Thrall from attacking. Are we now going to see the Sengir land number five? There's the Sengir Vampire, 4-4 four, four Flyer. Yeah, and this is a problem for Dominique, although he's still on 20, but, you know, has to try to find... He sorts to plowshares, but I believe he already played one out and one was lost from the hand due to the him to Turek earlier in the game. So he probably has two more swords in his deck. He's going to shuffle up again. I do like Lantex also as a weapon against this card because at a certain point you have so many lands in hand. If your opponent plays a him or uses the mind step throw, you're like, okay, I'm just going to throw away some basics. I don't mind. There's the attack, though. Look at that. He's going to take the damage. He wants to use the Mind Step Thrall, I guess. And then... Oh, okay. He's going to follow it up. He's got two more plays to make. The Kitkin. Oh, that is really cool. Nice to see this card. A card you don't see that often. It's a 1-1. One -one, and it can only be blocked with creatures by uh, with power 2 or less. So if you can pump it up with a Crusade or a Blessing, you've got kind of a combo going. And also we see another Order of Lightbird. That Order of Lightbird, of course, the perfect blocker for the Mind Step Thrall. So this attack here made sense by Dominique. I think he's piloting this uh, this white deck quite well. Matthijs on 15, so he can fly over with the Sengir. That's exactly what he does. Gonna deal four points of damage and passes the turn. Only one card in hand. And I think here, if you're Dominique, there, there, there are like multiple reasons you want to keep using the tax. And... One of the bigger reasons now that you've already have four lands on the battlefield, you don't need that many, is, um, you know, you want to take the basics out so you keep drawing ammunition. You want to keep drawing creatures or maybe that sort of plowshares, which would be a great help to get rid of that Sengir Vampire. There we see another planes. Are we going to see a Sarah? Oh, we're going to see. This is nice. So I believe it's called the, the Jihad, right? So it gives all your creatures plus two, plus one. That is huge. Look at this. Going into the red zone with all of his creatures. Doesn't really care about the desert. Says, you know, whatever. And of course it doesn't because now you've got the toughness. So this Jihad works together quite well with the uh, Kithkin, which is cannot be blocked at the moment because the Sengir has attacked. So he's looking at three damage from the Kithkin. He can block, of course, with the, uh, with the Willow. Yeah, because his power with two or less. So he can block with the Willow, not take the damage there, just have to, has to take uh, damage from the White Knight. Takes four points though, that's quite a lot. Oh, nice, this is so cool. So flavorful, King Suleiman hitting the board, so he can tap it to kill a Jinn or an Afrit. So if he has a Jusim Jinn in the deck, he can now kill it, that is so flavorful. And all of a sudden, Matthijs finds himself in a difficult position, like, it looked so good for him at a certain point in the game where Dominique only had one white land left. That was all he had on the board. That was all. And I really thought the game was going towards Matthijs. But now he's fought back so well that land tax has also given him so much. And look at this. He's just passing the turn. Wow. Yeah, this is just great. 
for Dominic and really impressive to see him kind of piloting his way back into this match. And just going to take out all the basics out of his deck, probably going to discard a few, but that doesn't matter. You don't want to draw any more lands with these white weenie decks, so it's better to just have them in hand, know that they're out of your deck, and then you can discard them on end step. Yeah, it's going to turn everything sideways, well, except except for the king, which makes sense, because the king can be blocked on the singer and killed. So there's the maze activation. Going to send back the Order of Lightbird. And he cannot block the Kithkin. That's not possible. And actually, that Sengir is kind of useless. There's the block regenerate. I mean, it's good at, at, at making sure he doesn't also attack with the King. But more damage here. Four more points of damage. There's the Savannah Lines. It's looking really good for Dominique. Matthijs dropping to seven. Ah, this is so difficult. And I think that uh, Jihad is really doing work. Remember, it gives all the creatures, white creatures, plus two, plus one. That is huge. There's the attack for four. I'm not sure if I would have attacked unless you've got some kind of board wipe. There's another thing here. The reason I'm saying that is now he could consider attacking also with the King Salem and let it be eaten by the Sengir. But yeah, this is going to be a little bit of maths here. For Dominique, does he want to have that extra damage? There we see the Armageddon. Uh, that work. Yeah, this is a classic move, right? Of White Weenie Armageddon with Lantex on your side. Also taking care of the maze that is huge because the maze was the only thing that could take care of the protection from uh, black creatures. Yeah, now it's going to put everything into the red zone, think knowing he's going to win. Still keeping the uh, king at bay, I guess, because it can be eaten there by the Singer, but. The only thing that Matthijs can do here is trade the Sengir for the Lions. Yep, that's it. Wow, what a comeback here by Dominique. That was amazing. I'm really impressed here how Dominique piloted his way back to victory after I thought it was going to be a sure loss for him. What an exciting game one. Now both players are going to shuffle up and uh, we're going to give them some time to, uh, time to dive into their sideboards. And we will catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So one up here for Dominique. That means Matthijs is on the play, starting with a Swamp passing the turn. Look at that turn one land tax for Dominique. That's where you want to be as a white weenie player. So pressure from the get-go, I guess, for Matthijs has to make a difficult decision. Does he want to play another land? Does have a Dark Ritual there in hand as well? Maybe he can do something with that. Going to tap a black. Has to win this, of course, to stay in the match. Remember, both of these decks are doing quite well here at the tournament. There we see him to Turek. So then he has one black floating still. And he's going to roll the dice. Number four. So there is a Jihad out of it. And then it has two cards. I'm not quite sure why he's only going to take one exactly. <laughs> that would be quite nice. That would be the first player ever to say, you know what? I will only let you discard one. So he has one black floating. Should take a mana burn here. Remember, we are playing according to the Atlantic rule set, so that's with mana burn. Exactly. Going to change it here to 19. There's a Thunder Wolves and a pass. And I think at a certain point, when you're the black player, you have to start playing out that second land. Or not, of course. If you've got enough Dark Rituals, there's a Hypnotic Spectre hitting the board. There's the pass. That means that that Thunderbolts can no longer attack, at least not for now. Are we going to see a Swords? There's a Swords to Plowshares. So two more lives for Matthijs, but also going to lose one, ending up on 20. Yeah, Lantex is so annoying to play against. Like, I remember, like, these moments in, in the match for myself as well. So I know what you're going through, Matthijs. That you're constantly thinking, should I play something out? Shouldn't I play something out? And in X points, the uh, Lantex is even better because Moxen or, you know, pointed cards. So not a lot of people play Moxen or Black Lotus in this format, actually. Uh, some do, but you have to think about it because it's going to cost you, I believe, two points for a Mox. So you really have to, th have to think about it. And you just don't see it as often making Lantex better because, of course, Moxen and, and Mana Dorks are a great way to kind of work around the Lantex. Here we do see a second land, though, from Dominique for that White Knight, meaning he's giving that land option here Back to Matthijs, but cannot really do anything with it. 
There's no sinkhole, no order of the uh, ebb and hand, just a pass turn. So, oh, there's a crusade. So he's playing with crusades and with jihad. That's killing. Attacking here for five. Matthijs on 13. Oh, man, it's looking bad. Come on, Matthijs. I would love to see a game three. This is such a classic matchup. Okay, there's the Chaos Orb. So could flip, I guess, on. Yes, yeah, a difficult decision. I think I would flip on the Crusade at this moment. But it's also tempting to go for the White Knight because that's a hard card to deal with. The Lantex, of course, is a very good card. But for now, you're surviving. So I wouldn't really worry about the tax. And he is going to flip. So yeah, not sure what the players are talking about, but um, yeah, maybe what he's gonna get. He's gonna go here for the White Knight. Let's see, it's a hit. And uh, the White Knight is a goner. Like I said, I think I would have gone for the Crusade, although yeah, White Knight is so good with the Pro Black, and then if you don't draw into your maze. So yeah, this makes sense as well, and it's gonna save you three points of damage instead of two. In this next turn and here we see uh, Dominique of course using the tax and drawing a card for turn yeah I mean an active tax is so good I do believe he drew another land so that's four basics for him there's the attack and uh, no not another white knight but an order of light burn maybe even worse and I mean that that also gives you a mana sink for your lands Okay, there's a disc. Okay, this is really what the match needed. Let's hope that there's not going to be a disenchant here. We see Dominique here, by the way, not using his land tax. Oh, there's Armageddon. Oh, oh, oh. This is so bad. I can wonder if you're Matthias. I would start ordering some beers. Unless you've got a land in hand, please, or draw a land. Please, please. Okay, you got a land. Okay. And I'm saying, please, I've got nothing against you, Dominique. Don't get me wrong, but I always love to see a game three, especially in such a classic matchup. So I'm rooting a little bit here for Matthijs. So Matthijs untapping the swamp here. And what are we going to see? There's a sinkhole. I mean, he's got so many planes still, though. At least at least it sets him back a little bit. There's the attack. It's going to go to four. Oh, man. Needs to find a creature to block the lion. Paralyzed would be good as well, actually. That would be quite nice. I always like the combination of Paralyze with uh, Land Destruction. There we see, uh, talking about Land Destruction, another Sinkhole. There's the attack by the Lion. Oh, no. Oh, another Lion. Oh, I think it's the end of the road here. Oh, this is so bad. Two cards in hand, I believe. They're for Matthijs. Needs to win this. Already one game behind. Remember, oh, both these decks are still undefeated. And there's a demonic... T what could he find with the tutor? I don't think there's anything that he can look up with the tutor to save him, but we'll see. Maybe Dark Ritual and what could that card in his hand then be to save him? Probably just going to go through his deck trying to find something, knowing that it's not there. Or maybe I'm missing something. The problem is he's on two. If he was on four, you know, he can... Look something up to deal with one of the lines and have a little bit of breathing space, you know. But, um, yeah, I really think it's the end of the road here for Matthijs. But let's hope I'm wrong. Like I said, I always love it when they go to a game three. Okay, so there's a mace. If he then has a paralyze, no, he doesn't, or else he would have played it out already. That's it. He's still shuffling, though, so... Yeah, it's the end of the road, exactly. I thought maybe he has that one card in hand. We'd love to see what it is. It is a Hypnotic Spectre, yeah. Oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. It was a very short game, but it was actually a very exciting game number two. I liked it, but I would have loved to see a game three between these two players. Thank you, Dominique Amatis, for showing your skills here on the channel. And this was another video from the Dutch X-Points Open. And next week, I will be back with more action. And we're slowly going towards the finals, actually. We have uh, next week, we have a nice, I think, round five match for you. That's going to be quite exciting. And after that, we have the finals. So uh, stick around. Make sure you don't miss a thing. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. So thank you very much for doing that. And if you're already subbed on the channel, thank you. Please consider leaving a like, share this on your socials and comment. 
All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. Talking about moving forward, I also have my very own Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash Talks for all the info. And talking about that, if you become a patron of the show, your name will be mentioned in the amazing, fabulous, wonderful end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Somebody can see.